Hi, my name is Erin. I am the manager of the Kids Bookshop, though I'm currently on maternity leave. I previously have been the education consultant at Penguin Books and I used to travel around visiting various schools talking about books for the English classroom. So this is what I'm going to be doing for you tonight. Um, there are a couple of books that I'll be talking about, including The Year of the Rat, Morris Clatsman's Loyal Creatures, Claire Zorn's The Sky is So Heavy, and David Metzenthon's Tigerfish. The Year of the Rat is by British author Claire Furness and follows the story of Pearl, a 16 year old girl whose mother has died during childbirth. Pearl is struggling big time. She's just done her exams, she's trying to decide whether or not she goes back to school to finish her final year. Her best friend has a new boyfriend and seems to be moving on and she finds herself unable to open up to anybody around her. Her stepfather is also struggling and desperately wants the baby home from hospital and when she does come home, Pearl doesn't know how to deal. On top of all of that, Pearl thinks, of course, that her mother is gone forever but she keeps turning up and she will come and talk to Pearl and Pearl is desperate for this to continue but doesn't know how long it's going to go on. And so throughout the story, you're not really sure whether this is all just going on in Pearl's mind or how this is actually happening. It's a really beautiful story. It's, um, of course, most of all a story about grief, about a girl who doesn't know how to deal with her emotions or how to talk to the people around her and most of all how to connect with this baby, her little sister, um, who is the last connection she has to her mother, really. I'd recommend this one for probably year eight or nine, um, mostly girls, I think. I'm not sure that the boys will necessarily get a lot out of it, um, but it is probably a story that you can make lots of connections to and one that you could really talk about grief and family and friendship and coming to terms with those really difficult times um, all by yourself. Morris Gleitzman's Loyal Creatures. You of course will be very familiar with Morris Gleitzman. His books are taught all over Australia in classrooms of various age levels. This one stood out for me because it does seem to be just a little bit older, although you will of course find students in years 5 and 6 who have read it as well, just because they're such big Morris fans. Um, but the main protagonist in this one is 15 going on 16, and the content, um, the subject matter, means that you can take it up that little bit further, perhaps year 8, even maybe year 9, particularly if you have a lower level year 9, it's, as it's very accessible. So Loyal Creatures came about when Morris was asked by Warhorse author Michael Morpurgo to write a stage version of his story. And it was only a very short one and Morris decided to elaborate and turn it into this novel. So it's set during World War One, follows 15 year old Frankie and his father who as of yet have not gone off to fight as um, they promised Frankie's mother on her deathbed that they would not. But then they received the white feather in the mail and they decide they have to sign up and so off they go and the story follows Frankie and his beloved horse um, mainly as they head to Egypt and then of course you know into the war zone itself. It's a really beautiful story about the horses who did not come home from the war and the relationship they had with their riders and the lengths that someone like Frankie went to to try and save his best friend. So of course it's sad, you'll probably need the tissues um, as with so many of Morris's books, but of course it's very funny in parts as well. Beautifully written, fantastic subject area that of course there's so many books that you can link it to, including Warhorse and many others as well. As I mentioned, you could definitely take it up to year eight, possibly even year nine. For that lower secondary, I think it's perfect as a classroom novel as well, and it will have such wide appeal being written by Morris. Sky So Heavy is by Australian author Claire Zorn. Um, this is her first novel and a great accomplishment, I think. Um, for years 9 and 10, possibly year 8, you can maybe take it down a little bit. This one is set in Sydney and it is the story of a nuclear fallout. So it follows Finn, 15 year old Finn and his younger brother. So for Finn, when it begins, it's a day like any other. He's about to head off to school. His mother works for the government. Um, and his father has a new wife. So he lives with his father and um, his stepmother who he doesn't really get along with very well. So he's about to head off to school and they get word that there's something going on in Northern Hemisphere, that there's some kind of war, but he hasn't really worried much about it. He lives in the Blue Mountains. 
During that day, he gets a call from his mother to say, you need to stockpile the house, uh, basically. Find as much water and as much food as you can and stay inside. And that's when we learn that there has been a nuclear explosion in the Northern Hemisphere and the fallout is heading for Australia. For Finn, this is when everything begins to change. Everything shuts down around them and the nuclear fallout is becoming quite apparent. There's a grey snow covering everything, they can't really go outside and before too long food and water begins to run out and of course this is what brings out the worst in people. His father and stepmother have been making their way um, out of the Blue Mountains and they've been cut off so Finn and his younger brother are left to their own devices and their neighbours around them are running out of food and they don't know what to do and for Finn he's not sure how to cope. And so together with his younger brother and some of his, a couple of his friends, they decide to make their way down to Sydney because this is where his mother is. And he thinks that if he can find his mother, then he will know what to do next. And this is really a story um, about community and how society breaks down as a result of a disaster like this. It's a very interesting discussion about refugees. Um, as Finn and his friends make their way to Sydney they find that it's been fenced off and anyone who's not from Sydney is not allowed in and it becomes quite apparent that all the food and water and resources are in Sydney as well. So the government has had to make choices about who, will, who they will help and who they will not. It would be a, a good accompaniment to Tomorrow When the War Began or even something like The Hunger Games as you know kids are so drawn into those kinds of stories at the moment. So Year 9 and 10, Boys and Girls, um, it's fast paced, it's a really interesting story and one that could really provoke some interesting discussions in the classroom. Tigerfish by David Metzenthen. Many of you of course will be familiar with David Metzenthen as his, many of his novels are taught um, in schools in about Year 9 and 10. This one is not one of his historical novels, it's set in the western suburbs of Melbourne. And follows a kid called Ryan um, who goes to a pretty average school. Um, his older brother is a bouncer and the area he lives in, which is kind of not explicitly um, said to be, you know, Footscray, that kind of area, but you know if you're from that area or you know it, that that's where it's set and around High Point as well. Um, so it's a pretty rough area for Ryan. And it follows his relationship with a girl called Ariel who works in the shopping centre where he spends a lot of his time. And it really is about uh, poverty in a lot of ways. She comes from a very poor family. Her mother is a single mother who is dealing with post-traumatic stress um, disorder, you guess from um, a violent relationship. Um, and it's about taking your chances, I guess, to try and remove yourself from the situation that you're in. What I particularly like about this story is that Ryan is a really lovely character. He comes from this very rough neighbourhood where there's quite a lot of violence. Um, his best friend owns a lot of weapons um, that he uses in various situations throughout the story. I don't want to give it away. Um, but he's a really down-to-earth, very nice boy, which I think is um, quite refreshing a lot of the time. So Dave Metz has done a great job of depicting the the setting in this one and the people around it. He's got a very Australian feel to the way that he writes, which I really like. Um, and this one I think will be suited to Year 9 and 10, particularly for kids who are from areas such as this. I think they will find lots to relate to um, and lots to connect to in a story such as this. this these schools are very familiar to me as someone who has visited lots of schools in various areas around Melbourne. And I think that David Metzenthen has drawn a, a, on a lot of his experience visiting schools and attending various schools around Melbourne as well. So it's very Melbourne centric, which I think kids will like. So often um, kids are presented with views of books set in places like Hawthorne or Camberwell, um, not so much in the areas that they grow up from. In, and I think this one um, does that very, very well. It also reminded me a bit of um, The Incredible Here and Now. It made me think of this, which I think was shortlisted this year, so it's one that you may want to consider um, looking at side by side.